We recently just finished our first science unit study on space. And I wanted to share with you kind of how I grew together and the activities that we did in hopes that maybe if you wanted to study space with your family, you might have some ideas to play off of as well. Hi, I'm Jamie and this is Simply Learning Together. I am a homeschool mom of four. And this year we are doing these simple unit studies for our science and history. I'm doing it with all four of my children. Well, probably technically three because I have one that naps and we do a lot of the fun stuff while he's napping. But our whole family is reading about these topics together. My children are eight, six, three, and almost two. And we've had so much fun. We've done some history units already this year and we just wrapped up our first science one. So I'm so excited to share with you kind of how we threw it together. It's so simple and it really ended up being a good time. Now, when I do a unit study, I do not plan out a bunch of different things on a checklist. To me, I feel like it kind of sets me up for failure and I start to feel guilty that I can't do the things that are there. I more take the approach of making a wish list. So when a unit is coming up, I will start to maybe search for different activities related to the topic and I might make a note either in my head or in my planner, oh, this might be fun. And I kind of just put a list down for me to think about. I don't try to plan it in my day. When we have space in our day, I will choose one of those activities to throw in so that it works because it never fails. When I try to throw in something extra, something goes haywire. <laughs> whether it's a spilt milk or a toddler tantrum, and then I get a little bit frazzled on trying to fit the extra things in. So we plan our days to where we have a space in the afternoon. As long as we're caught up with everything, I'll use that space for these different activities on my wish list. I hope kind of sharing that gives you an idea of how I plan it. I try to keep it really simple. I'm not trying to accomplish, you know, 700 things for one unit, but I do try to do a couple of things to enrich what we're reading together. The focus from our science comes actually from our devotion book. This is How Great Is Our God. We love these devotions. We've done another one by the same author. And if, when I received this book, they actually have categories, and let me just kind of show you. They show you what pages are related to that topic. The first one is space, and it gives you about 15 to 20 devotions about space. So every morning we read a space-related devotion, and that was kind of the first step to our science unit study. The next thing I did was I went to the library to get books. Now, I am so bad about putting books on hold. I just, I the same thing about the library. We do not have a library day. I wait for a day that works for our family when we have the time. And so I don't, I don't always have a chance to put things on hold and then they're ready. So I literally just go to the nonfiction section. I find out where they have information about space and I just start pulling. I'll open them up. If it's full, super wordy, my kids aren't going to read that. But if it's kind of like at that elementary level, I'll just grab it and fill up my bag. When we get home, I display the books on our shelf. You, you can see this here, we're in a different unit right now, but I put them on display and they're there for us to use. Now, I try to read as many as I can during our morning time so that we are reading one devotion and then I try to read one of our space books. But they're also there for my kids to grab if they're interested. Sometimes they might do it while we're in the schoolroom or one of my children has their quiet time in this room and so she'll kind of take a look at some stuff in there. So they're just there on display for the kids to look at and read as they please. So we've got two parts so far. We've got our devotion and then we have our library books and I try to read one library book a day. Now I did go to the nonfiction section sometimes if my toddler's not too you know running around like crazy at the library I will go and browse the children's section to see if I can find something um, but I want to say I maybe got oh, just one or two but I will do that if I can. When I use that method for the library, we definitely just get books by chance. Sometimes we come across some really great books. So I just wanted to share a couple with you. 
One of the books is called If You Were the Moon, and I will link it here for you. It was kind of like a, it, it made the moon almost like if it was a human, you know, it talked about when it went around the earth, they were like dancing. It was just really cool to see, really cool pictures, um, a great way to visualize the jobs of the moon. <laughs> and um, the other one we really enjoyed was Planet Hunters, and it was how Pluto what happened with Pluto, basically. So I'll link those two books here. They were very cute, and very informative, and we enjoyed them very much. Devotion, check. Library, check. The other thing I do is sometimes I will throw in a show. So when I'm cooking lunch, if there is a show that can enrich what we're learning, I will put it on. This isn't every day. This is just kind of as we go. So a couple that we enjoyed, Magic School Bus Lost in Space is always a hit. That one was super fun, and we had that book from the library as well, so it was kind of fun to do a little comparison there. So we watched that one day. Um, my little two, they love Blippi. <laughs> but he has a episode where he kind of makes a rocket ship out of cardboard and flies through space and looks at the planets. All four of my kids watched Blippi fly through space, so even though that's just like so silly, um, it, I mean, it was definitely something that we learned from. To add a little fun to our movie watching, we picked a couple family movies that we could watch together on the weekends. One is Rocket Man, which I think it came out in the 90s or early 2000s, but it is hilarious. So we had a great time watching that. And then we watched another one called Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen. That one, there's quite a bit of language in there, so I don't know if that, if, you know, you definitely have to be aware of that, and also, it was a little bit scary with the aliens and, you know, the fighting, so I probably wouldn't suggest that unless you have kids that are maybe 10 and up. We've got devotionals, library, some shows to watch with it, and like I said, we're just fitting everything in as it fits through our day. The next thing we did was activities, little crafty kind of things. Now, I'm going to share with you what we did. And, you know, if this is something that you want to do, pick and choose what you like. If you don't like painting, don't do the paint. If you don't like, you know, something else, just don't even do it. <laughs> do what makes you happy. But sometimes having a list to pick from makes it easy for you to throw something together. So what we had time for the first thing was we made solar system cupcakes and I'm going to share some pictures with you as I share this. Um, I took a regular cupcake mix and made some cupcakes and while they baked I took our library books that talked about the different planets and I printed a free coloring page from the internet and I'll link it here for you and they colored a planet as I read about it. So we're learning about the planets and their characteristics, okay? And we're coloring it on a sheet. Then we cut them out. I taped the planet on a toothpick. So we had the cupcakes, they were baked, we iced them, we put the toothpick in, and then once we had all the toothpicks with the planet and then we put them in the right order. So we talked about the order of the planets and we can use little rhymes that you might have used when you grew up. My very educated mother just served us nachos, I think is what we used. And so we ordered them all in the right order and then we ate them. And it was so simple. And, uh, you know, I, I probably could have gotten fancier with the icing or something, but, you know, it was just so easy and fun and they were good. <laughs> so that was one of the things that we did. The next thing that we did was we read about moon phases. That was a book from the library. I had a couple books about moons that had pages on moon phases. And so we could refer to a couple different ones. And you've probably seen this activity everywhere. We just had a paper plate and some Oreos and we opened them up and made the cream look like the different phases of the moon. And we could talk about each one. So that was super memorable. Once again, delicious. I love food activities. <laughs> and you know, now when we look at the moon, it's just a lot more meaningful. So that really made an impact on them. One of the last things we did was a painting that was super simple. And oh, actually you can see it behind me. This is a foil moon painting. So we used a paper plate and made a circle and then we took a piece of foil and just crumbled it up. And that was what we used for the paint. And so we used different shades of gray. And then I let the kids decorate the sky how they wanted to. So they were super cute, turned out great. Even my three-year-old participated. And it's just one color paint very easy to throw together and do. So that's pretty much it as far as extra things. We 
do live not too far from the Houston Space Center. I love to take them on a field trip, and so we were able to go to NASA and experience all the things there. We learned so much, and we even saw a real astronaut in training. So, you know, if you're doing a unit study and you can throw in a field trip, I highly recommend it. But I do know that sometimes the cost makes it a little tricky. And then also, um, you know, if you have littles, field trips are hard. <laughs> but we're finally getting to that stage where I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's more doable. So we enjoyed that field trip to kind of top everything off. So overall, very simple. Devotion, books, a few crafts on the side, definitely some snacks, uh, some TV shows, and a field trip. And just a reminder, keep it simple. You know, there's this, I've, I've given you kind of like a list of ideas. And so you have a variety of things to choose from, but only pick what works for you. And that's kind of my simple approach to doing a unit study. It never feels like something I have to do, but if the time is available, then we'll definitely try it out. I'd love to know if you're thinking about doing space this year, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you have planned. I can definitely keep that in mind in case we do another space unit. I'm sure we will. One day, um, I'm going to add the, your ideas to my list. And um, if you do one of these ideas, come back and let me know how it went for your family.